Ayan, so good day everyone. In this video, I will be uh, talking about the general properties of materials we use in uh, civil engineering projects. So, sa video na to, I have classified these properties into two, physical properties and mechanical properties. So, para mas madali nating maintindihan kung ano yung physical at mechanical properties, we may define physical properties as uh, properties that describes the state of the material. And then for mechanical properties is the property that describes the effect or the uh, dito, effect or reaction of the material upon the uh, application of an external force or external load. So, yun yung uh, para mapag-differentiate natin yung physical tsaka mechanical properties natin. So, simple definitions lang. So, first we have uh, physical properties. So, for the first physical property, we have here density. So, it says here that density is the dry mass per unit volume of a substance under absolute compact conditions. So, dry mass, yung mass niya kasi meron mass na included yung moisture content kapag basa yung material mo. Siyempre, may measure mo yung moisture content sa mass niya. Pero kapag uh, fully dry, yun yung uh, kailangan natin para makuha yung density. Of a substance under absolute compact conditions, meaning yung compaction niya is talagang yung volume lang mismo nung uh, material mo. Say for example, yung kinukuha mo ng density is, uh, let's say, aggregate siya. So, mga bato. So, nilagay mo siya, kunwari, sa isang container na ganito yung itsura. So, ito yung naging itsura ng mga bato mo. So, kapag density yung dinidefine natin dito, hindi itong buong volume na ito. Kasi kapag minensure mo ito, syempre ang makukuha mong volume, itong volume ng container. Kapag density yung minensure natin, ang volume is under absolute compact conditions. Yung volume na kailangan is yung volume lang ng mga solid area. Hindi included yung void area dito. So, yun yung uh, pagkuha ng density. Or tinatawag natin na uh, absolute compact conditions. Yung walang included na uh, void area or void na volume. So, density is equal to mass over volume. So, rho is equal to m over v. So, rho yung uh, symbol natin for density. m is the mass under dry conditions. V is the volume under absolute compact conditions. So, yun yung density natin. Density of some building materials are as follows. So, for brick, 2.5 to 2.8 grams per cubic centimeter. For granite, 2.6 to 2.9. For Portland cement, 2.9 to 3.1. For wood, 1.5 to 1.6. For steel, 7.8 to 7.9. For sand, 2.6 to 2.9. So, usually kasi, mga, kung makikita yung mga materials dito, pinakamataas na density is yung steel. So, usually, rinerelate kasi nila yung density sa strength ng material natin. Mas mataas yung density, mas mataas yung strength. Pero ngayon, uh, due to advances in technology, meron na tayong mga material na mababa yung density, meaning uh, magaan yung material, pero yung strength niya, uh, mataas. So, for example, mga carbon materials. So, so mga uh, mahilig magbike dyan, mga carbon na nilalagay nila. Mas mahal yung mga ganun kasi uh, binabayaran mo yun doon sa mga material na ganun yung kung gaano kagaan yung material and yung strength niya na uh, compared sa steel sobrang bigat same lang din naman yung strength nila so syempre doon ka na sa mas magaan mga ganun 
So, yun yung usual na ano kasi ng density. Next, bulk density. Bulk density refers to the mass per unit volume of a substance under the conditions that powdery or granular, granular materials are packed. It is the mass of a unit volume of a material in its natural state with pores and voids. Yung mass niya, uh, syempre dry mass pa rin to of a unit volume of a material in its natural state. So, kunwari, yung minimation mo, again, is yung uh, mga aggregate. So, sample, nilagay nyo siya sa container. Sa bulk density, so say for example, yan. Sa bulk density, yung pagkuha mo ng volume ng uh, i-divide mo sa mass mo is included na itong volume ng voids. Bale, ang kinukompute mo na is yung uh, container volume na pinaglagyan mo ng uh, aggregate mo. Kasi it is in its natural state. Hindi siya compacted uh, unlike yung sa density. So, bulk density is equal to the dry mass over the volume in its natural state. Included yung Kung yung volume kanina is yung volume of solids lang, ngayon, volume na ito is equal to volume of solids plus yung volume ng voids mo. Which is composed of, yung volume of voids is composed of volume of water. Siyempre, merong mga moisture content yan. Tsaka, kapag hindi filled ng water yung mga voids mo or pores mo, volume of air. So, ayan. So, bulk density is rho B. M is the mass under dry conditions. VO is the volume under packing conditions. So, yung packing is uh, in its natural state, yung pagkaka-compaction niya. Bulk density of some building materials are as follows. 1,600 to 1,800 kilogram per cubic meter for brick. Granite is 25 to 2,700. Portland cement, 1,300 to 1,700. Pine wood, 500 to 600. Sand, 1,450 to 1,650. Steel, 7,850. So, kung mapapansin nyo, try nyo i-convert siya sa density. So, ito, medyo pag kinonvert nyo siya, makikita nyo na mas mataas yung makukuha yung density kesa sa bulk density. Kasi yung dito sa bulk density ninyo, yung volume ninyo ay mas malaki. Kasi included na itong volume of voids. Yung sa density is ito lang, volume of solid. So, kapag mas malaki yung VO mo, yung nasa baba mo, malamang delete ito. So, inversely proportional kasi siya. So, yan. Bulk density. Next is the density index. So, the density index is the ratio of bulk density and density. It indicates the degree to which the volume of material is filled with solid matter. So, simply, uh, bulk density over density. So, ito, uh, ini-indicate niya kapag ilang percent yung Ano, yung field ng solid matter. So, ang makukuha mo is 0 point something. Hindi percent. Kapag minultiply mo siya ng 100%, yun makukuha mo yung percent. Pero, yung density index ay hindi percentage. Ito ay degree. So, 0 point something siya. So, simply, bulk density over density lang siya. So, most of the materials kasi, uh, in its natural state, talagang mas malaki yung volume niya. Uh, kailangan i-compact para makuha mo talaga yung density niya. Next, we have here the specific weight. It is also known as the unit weight per uh, unit volume of a material. So, unit weight per unit volume. So, kung maaalala nyo sa physics ninyo, Weight is equal to mass times gravity. So, yung 
specific weight will be equal to ito specific weight is gamma uh, it is the weight per unit volume so weight per unit volume para makuha mo yung gamma uh, divide mo lang yung weight and kung alam mo yung density nya yung density is equal to mass per unit volume uh, multiply mo lang ng G multiply G sa kapag minultiply mo ng G ito magiging uh, weight siya so simply pero multiply by G lang ito uh, specific weight natin so unit weight per uh, unit weight per unit volume of a material so gamma is the specific weight or unit weight Rho is the density and G is uh, gravity. Next is we have here specific gravity. So, baka mapag-halo nyo or di nyo mapag-alam yung difference between specific weight at specific gravity. So, specific gravity of a solid particle of a material is the ratio of weight over mass weight or mass sorry so weight or mass of a given volume of solid to the weight or mass of an equal volume of water at 4 degrees celsius so gs yung symbol natin for specific gravity it is equal to the weight or mass of a given volume of solids to the weight or mass of an uh, equal volume of water at 4 degrees celsius so Ito yung talagang ano niya. Mass of the solid over the mass of the water. Or weight of the solid over the weight of the water. Kaya lang siya naging ganito kasi yung mass over uh, volume of solid uh, mass of water over volume of water Yung volume of water tsaka volume of solid mo kasi ay equal. So, pwedeng V na lang yung ilagay mo dyan. Magka-cancel to. Kaya, pwedeng gamitin mo is either density or itong uh, unit weight. So, magka-cancel lang yung mga volume dyan. Tsaka, syempre, kapag density yung ginamit mo, pareho silang merong G dito. So, magka-cancel lang din yung letter G dyan. Or yung gravity. Sorry. And then, yung volume ng water mo is at 4 degrees uh, Celsius. So, usually, yung uh, density ng tubig at 4 degrees Celsius is 1 gram per cubic centimeter or 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter for the unit weight of water at 4 degrees Celsius. We have here 9,810 newton per cubic meter or 9.81 kilonewtons per cubic meter. So, yan. Bale, ang ginagawa nyo na lang is alamin nyo yung uh, unit weight o kaya density ng material ninyo. I-divide nyo na lang siya either sa 1,000 kapag density, kapag uh, newton per, ay, sorry, Kapag unit weight naman yung nakuha ninyo, pwede nyo i-divide ito. Uh, unit weight ng water. So, depende na lang sa units na ginagamit nyo. Tignan nyo na lang. Kasi baka yung unit nyo is grams per cubic centimeter yung density nyo dito. Kasi invest na uh, divide nyo lang sa 1, dinivide nyo dito. So, mali-mali na. Dapat check nyo yung unit ng density ninyo o kaya yung unit weight ninyo. Ayan. Next is the true or absolute specific gravity. So, GA, if both the permeable and impermeable voids are excluded for determining the true volume of solids, the specific gravity obtained is called the absolute specific gravity. So, yung unit weight mo dito or yung density mo is sa pag-compute ng unit weight at density mo, uh, hindi included yung volume ng voids mo or yung volume of air tsaka volume of uh, water 
na included sa pag syempre kapag uh, uh, hindi siya compact and maigi meron siyang mga volume of voids na uh, included so true or absolute specific gravity ang ginagamit mo lang is yung density or yung unit weight hindi yung bulk density or yung bulk unit weight kapag naman apparent or mass specific gravity if both the permeable and impermeable voids are included to determine the volume of solids The specific gravity is called apparent specific gravity. Yung unit weight mo dito is bulk unit weight. And then yung unit weight mo ay, sorry, yung density mo dito is yung bulk density ng material mo. So, ang tawag doon is apparent mass or apparent specific gravity or mass specific gravity. So, divided by unit weight of water or density of water. So, dito, same pa rin yung unit weight of water tsaka density of water. Unit weight is 9810 kilonewton per cubic meter and then density is 1000 kilogram per cubic meter. So, next is the porosity. It is the degree to which the volume of the material is interspersed with pores. It is the uh, expressed as a ratio of the volume of pores or voids to that of the specimen. So, porosity is equal to the volume of voids over the total volume of the specimen. Total volume is equal siya sa volume of voids mo plus yung volume ng specimen mo or solid parts ng specimen. Kasi may mga voids pa rin. So, void ratio naman, it is defined as the ratio of the volume of voids to the volume of solid. BV over Vs. So, ito, porosity tsaka void ratio, meron silang relationship. So, pwede tayo mag-start from uh, N. So, N is yung porosity natin. Equal siya sa volume of voids over the volume of Uh, the specimen total volume so in case na di nyo maalala yung relationship nila uh, gaya ko, hindi ko kabisado yung formula pwede nyo siya i-derive so n is equal to the volume of voids over the total volume ang total volume ay equal to volume of voids plus volume of solid so n is equal to volume of void over the volume of void plus the volume of solid. Di-divide natin itong sa taas ng uh, sorry. Di-divide natin itong sa taas ng uh, total volume uh, sorry. Di-divide natin siya ng volume of solids and dito rin sa baba, di-divide natin siya ng volume of solid. So, divide itong dalawa. So, N would be equal to volume of void over the volume of solids over volume of void over volume of solid plus volume of solid over volume of solid. So, this one will be equal to 1. And then, kung makikita nyo, volume of void over volume of solid is equal to the void ratio. So, recall natin, BB over BS is equal to E. So, ito siya. And, ito rin siya. Yeah? Yan. So, N will be equal to E over E plus 1. So, ayan yung relationship nila. Paano naman kapag ang given is yung N? So, kailangan natin yung E. E is equal to, ito, volume of void over volume of solid. Ang volume of solid natin mula dito, pwede mo siyang i-transpose. So, wait. Sorry. Ang transpose natin is itong volume of voids. Uh, subtract ka both sides ng volume of voids. Magiging itsura nito is volume of solid is equal to volume of uh, the specimen total volume minus volume of voids. So, substitute natin siya dito. E will be equal to volume of voids over the Uh, total volume minus volume of voids. Next, dito naman, didibay natin 
sa taas at sa baba ng total volume, E will be equal to volume of void over the P. And then, okay lang mag-divide sa taas at sa baba kasi divided. Dinibide mo sa taas, ganun din yung gagawin mo sa baba para magka-cancel lang sila. Ganun. So, B over B dito sa baba and then minus volume of void over uh, total volume. Recall ninyo, ito, sorry. Ito, tsaka to, ay equal to N, volume of void over volume of B specimen. So, E will be equal to N over 1 minus N. So, yan yung relationship nila. Kapag uh, di nyo maalala itong formula ng to, tsaka ito, pwede nyo i-derive. So, ito lang yung derivation niya. Pero kung uh, trip nyo mag-memorize, syempre, mas maganda memorize nyo na lang kesa gawin nyo pa to. Kasi ako, nakakalimutan ko itong formula na to. Kapag uh, napagpapalit ko yung E tsaka M minsan. So, ginagawa ko is, syempre, ito, derive. So, yan. Next is hygroscopicity. It is the property of a material to absorb water vapor from air. It is influenced by air temperature and relative humidity. Pores, their types, number, and size, and by the nature of substance involved. It can be expressed by moisture content. And moisture content is the percentage of water contained in a material to its dry mass. The property of a material to absorb water vapor from the air. So, moisture content is... Uh, itong hygroscopicity, uh, ang ina-absorb lang kasi nito is, syempre, water... Nandito na nga, uh, uh, water vapor from the air. So, hindi siya exposed sa... Uh, tubig talaga. Bali yung tubig niya lang ay nanggagaling sa vapor from the air. And then it is expressed by moisture content. So yung moisture content mo naman is the percentage of water contained in a material to its dry mass. So ito yung moisture content. So omega is equal to weight of the water over the uh, weight of the solid or mass of water over the mass of the solid uh, dry solid or dry mass of the material so yung water na nakakontain over the weight sorry, the weight of the water na nasa material mo over the weight of the solid parts so hindi included yung weight ng uh, voids mo Okay, so next we have here water absorption. So water absorption refers to the property of absorbing water when materials are exposed to water. It is expressed by the water absorption ratio. So yung water absorption, uh, pinagkaiba lang sa hygroscopicity. Yung hygroscopicity kasi, yung pumapasok na uh, tubig sa kanya is galing lang sa air, ito is exposed talaga siya sa tubig. So, hindi lang sa moisture. Or yung moisture ng air. Yung pumapasok na tubig sa materiales. So, meron dalawang klase ng water absorption. We have the first one is the specific absorption of quality. It refers to the percentage of absorbed water to the dry mass. When the material absorbs water to saturation. So, weight of water over weight of the solid material. When S is equal to 1.0. Ano yung S? So, S is the saturation. Meaning, yung volume of water mo is equal siya sa volume of voids mo. Kasi magiging 1.0 lang naman itong uh, value nito. Kung ito equal siya sa volume of voids. So, meaning yung volume of voids fill siya ng buo ng uh, dito, volume of water. Meaning, itong volume of voids mo, wala na siyang air voids. Volume of water na lang siya. Yung air voids is Pa is equal to 0. 
So, sabi dito, it is the percentage. So, dapat, itong makukuha mo kasi dito is point something. Uh, multiplied by 100% ito. Same din dito, 100%. So, specific absorption of quality. Next, we have here the specific absorption of volume. It refers to the percentage of the absorbed water's volume to the material's natural volume when the material absorbs water to saturation. So, volume ng tubig over yung total volume ng uh, material mo. Yung total volume niya is yung uh, solid volume tsaka yung uh, volume of points. Wherein, itong volume of Sabi nga dito, saturation, yung volume of water mo dito is equal siya sa total volume ng iyong voids. So, pwede mong lagay na lang to BV or PW. Basta kailangan uh, totally filled ng uh, tubig yung volume of voids mo dito. And then, it is a percentage. So, kailangan multiply mo ng 100%. Okay, so next is we have here weathering resistance it is the ability of a material to endure alternate wet and dry conditions for a long period without considerable deformation and loss of mechanical strength so example ng uh, merong medyo obvious or kita-kita mo yung weathering sa material is yung uh, dito wood so Kung makikip, mapapansin niyo yung mga uh, wood na materials, kapag na-expose siya sa tubig, mag-e-expand kasi yung uh, wood mo. So, say for example, yung uh, dito, wall. So, say for example, wall na ginamit mo is wood, mag-e-expand siya during rainy season kapag nabasa siya kasi mag-a-absorb siya ng moisture ng rain. And then, during dry season, mag-shrink back siya. Uh, usually kasi kapag nag-shrink siya or bumalik siya sa dati niyang size, uh, merong deformation na hindi na pwedeng maibalik. Na yung na-absorb niya na tubig, uh, na-deform niya, niya yung material mo. So, ayan. It should be able to resist that uh, deformation. So, weathering resistance. And then, next, we have here permeability. is the capacity of a material to allow water to penetrate under pressure. So, ito. K is the permeability coefficient. Q is the volume of seepage. So, it is in cubic centimeters. Centimeter per second yung K. D is the thickness of the specimen. A is the seepage area. T is the seepage time and H is the waterhead. Usually, yung formula na to is ganito lang yung makikita ninyo. K is equal to QD over AH. Usually kasi yung QD to is, uh, ang nilalagay na lang is yung flow rate. So, kung flow rate yung given, flow rate is, ang unit niya is uh, cubic centimeter per uh, second. So, ang nawala dito kasi is yung time. Sa formula na to. Q, K is equal to QD AH. Yung time niya is in-include na siya sa Q na ito. So, yung Q is kung yung Q na given is yung flow rate. Pero, kung yung Q na given is yung volume, kailangan mo i-divide yung given na time. Ng uh, time of seepage. So, ayan. Usually kasi, given na talaga is flow rate. So, cubic uh, centimeter per second. Next is, kabaliktaran ng water permeability, water impermeability. Impermeability is the ability of a material to resist the pressure, uh, water, or the infiltration of other liquids. Materials like glass, Steel and bitumen are impervious. Usually, may mga materials kasi na kailangan talaga na impermeable. Uh, for example, um, mga 
materials na ginagamit for irrigation. So, syempre, ayaw mo naman na magkaroon ng loss yung uh, volume of water mo dahil sa transportation niya sa irrigation or pagdaan niya sa irrigation mo. So, dapat impermeable yung gagamitin mong materials doon. And for uh, permeable naman, uh, usually ginagamit to sa mga kalsada. So, para hindi magbaha yung kalsada, dapat uh, yung sa shoulder niya is dapat permeable. Meaning, mag sisip yung tubig sa uh, part na yun para madaling uh, tawag dito, bumaba yung uh, water level sa kalsada mo. So, yan. Next, we have here for resistance. It denotes the ability of water-saturated material to endure repeated freezing and towing with considerable decrease of mechanical strength. So, pagkaiba nito sa weathering resistance, yung frost resistance, imagine mo itong, uh, say for example, itong wall, meron kang crack dito. So, say for example, nag-zoom in ka sa crack na yan. So, imagine nyo, this is a, tawag dito, uh, CHB wall na may plaster. So, kapag uh, nag-zoom in ka sa crack na yan, so, ito yung makikita mo. So, yung crack. So, drawing na lang natin. So, sobrang zoom in mo, straight na yung crack. So, ito. Say, for example, itong crack na to is filled with water. Usually, yung problem naman ng itong uh, frost resistance, uh, kailangan lang to sa mga lugar na may snow. Pero kapag magde-design kayo sa mga lugar na yun, so, at least may knowledge kayo kung, pa, kung ano yung nangyayari dito. Yung, ito, yung crack mo, filled with uh, moisture or tubig. Kapag nag uh, bumaba yung temperature or nag ice ito, yung tubig na nandito sa crack na to is mag-expand -e yung volume. Hindi naman sobrang mag-expand -e na sobrang laki, pero yung expansion na kasi na yun is mag-a-apply siya ng certain force dito sa crack mo. And then, magde-deform itong crack na to, luluwag ng onte itong uh, crack na to. And then, kapag nag-melt na siya, syempre, wala na yung uh, force na yun nga naka-exert. Ang mangyayari, lumuwag yung crack mo, meron na siyang lumaki na yung... Wait lang, sorry. From ganun kalit na crack, syempre, lalaki siya ng onte dahil nga doon. And then, dahil nag-melt na nga siya uh, during summer, for example, after niya mag-melt, maglilip siya na mas malaki na nakrap. So, dapat, uh, kaya niyang i-resist yung ganong force. Yung kapag na... <coughs> oh, dito. Nag-freeze siya, kaya niya dapat i-resist yung force na papalabas para hindi siya lumaki yung crack mo. So, yun yung cross resistance. Ayan. So, next, we have here yung thermal capacity. So, thermal capacity is the property of the material to absorb heat when it is heated and to release heat when it is cooled. So, C is the specific heat of the material. It is uh, joules per gram degrees Celsius and M is the mass of the material. Q is the, it is in grams. So, Q is the heat absorbed in joules and then, T2 minus T1 is the temperature difference uh, before and after heating or cooling. So, it is in degrees Celsius. So, importante yung thermal capacity para sa mga lugar na malaki yung change in temperature. Usually sa mga lugar na merong uh, snow, tsaka kapag mainit, sobrang init din. So, yung material mo, it must be able to absorb the heat and release heat when it is cool. Kasi kapag kunwari, 
Imagine nyo na lang, structure mo ito, bahay. Mainit dito sa labas. So, dapat, yung material na ginamit mo dito, it must be able to absorb the heat para kapag nainitan yung material mo, hindi iinit ng sobra dito sa loob ng uh, bahay or structure. Next is thermal deformation. Thermal deformation is the property of the substance to expand with heat and contract with cold. Customarily called the temperature deformation. So, alpha is the linear expansion coefficient of the substance. Uh, delta L is the expansion or contraction value of a material. L is the length before heating or cooling. Delta T is the temperature difference. So, usually, ang kinocompute kasi talaga dito is ito, delta L. Yung change in uh, length. So, delta L is equal to alpha L x delta t. Uh, ito, alpha L delta t. Um, tawag dito. Mostly application kasi nito is sa mga railroads kapag uh, mainit kasi mag -e expand yung uh, steel and then kapag malamig naman magpo-contract. Dapat yung uh, gap nun is sakto lang na kapag nag-contract siya, hindi sobrang layo ng gap. Kapag nag-expand naman siya, yung gap niya is hindi, mapag, hindi magdidikit yung steel mo kasi kapag nagdikit yun. Uh, yung force niya is magpo-cost siya na ng tawag dito magpo-cost siya ng bumps doon sa railroad mo so imagine nyo na lang so, ito yung steel mo kunwari pag sobrang init uh, magdidikit siya na magdidikit or lilit ng lilit yung gap kapag nagdikit na sila nagdikit na sila sorry kapag nagdikit na sila So, wala ng uh, room for expansion. Mangyayari is magkakaroon ng bulk dito. Dito na sila mag -e expand Sa so, sobrang uh, init. So, yung expansion na is ganito na. Papaakyat and then dito. So, magkakaroon ng pumps. So, ganun. Uh, thermal deformation. So, next we have here flame resistance. So, flame resistance is the property of a substance not to flame or be burned in case of contacting with fire in the air. So, dapat ma-identify mo yung uh, flame resistance ng materials mo. So, there are three types. So, non-flammable materials, ones that cannot be fired, carbonized, or slightly burned when contacting with fire or high temperature in the air. Next is fire retardant materials, ones that are hard to be burned or carbonized when contacting with fire or high temperature in the air. And stop burning or slightly flaming immediately leaving, uh, when leaving fire. So kapag uh, ito masusunog pa rin, ito hindi talaga masusunog, ito masusunog pa rin, pero kapag Uh, inalis mo na siya sa apoy is uh, hindi na siya magtutuloy-tuloy na masunog. So, yan. And mahirap masunog. And then, flammable materials once that are ignited or flame immediately when contacting with fire or high temperature in the air and continue to burn slightly or slightly flame when leaving fire. So, ito is yung madaling masunog. Ito, uh, non-flammable din na susunog, pa-retardant, mahirap masunog, and then, flammable yung madaling masunog ng materials natin. Next is refractoriness. It denotes the ability of the material to withstand prolonged action of high temperature without melting or losing shape. So, Kapag na-expose yung material mo sa high heat, uh, it must not be 
yung material mo should not be tawag dito yung deformation is bumabalik sa uh, original na shape niya or size niya so kaya kailangan kaya niyang i-withstand yung uh, prolonged action ng high temperature na hindi siya magme-melt or yung shape niya is bumabalik pa rin sa dating so hindi na lulus yung shape Chemical resistance is the ability of a material to withstand the action of acids, alkalis, sea, water, and gases. So, kapag yung um, gagawin mong structure is, um, say for example, malapit sa uh, dagat or mismo sa dagat mo, gagawin siya. Dapat yung materials na gagamitin mo is kaya niyang i-resist yung uh, seawater. Next is the dur durability. The ability of a material to resist the combined effects of atmospheric pressure and other factors. So, yan, durability. Next, we have here the mechanical properties. So, most of this is napag-aralan nyo naman na doon sa uh, tawag dito, strength of materials ninyo. So, uh, padaanan na lang natin and recall na lang natin yung mga uh, ito. So, strength is the greatest stress that a substance can bear under external forces or loads without destruction. So, greatest stress na kayang ibir. So, that can be built without destruction. So, there are different types of strength. So, tensile strength, kapag yung force mo is uh, perpendicular yung application ng force mo sa uh, area. Uh, tensile or compressive siya. Kapag papalayo sa area mo is tensile, kapag palapit sa area mo yung uh, force application is, it is compressive. Kapag yung area na nagre-resist naman is parallel sa application ng iyong force gaya nito, it is uh, shear strength. And then, kapag ganito naman, uh, magbebend kasi ito, it it is the bending resistance or the flexural strength ang tawag natin sa kanya. So, bending resistance or flexural strength. Uh, ang bending kasi, hindi siya gaya ng tensile, compressive, or shear. Ang bending is, dito kasi sa taas na is, uh, tawag dito, merong compressive strength. Uh, compressive resistance dito naman sa baba niya is meron siya tensile resistance. So, kung makikita nyo, nag-expand dito, dito is nag-compress. Uh, Ayan. Straight. Next is elasticity. It is the property of a substance to deform with external forces and return to its original shape when the stress is removed. So, magde-deform siya yung material mo, pero kapag nawala na yung uh, Applied force, magbabalik pa rin siya sa original shape. So, mga materials na meron ganitong uh, property is mga spring. So, yan. Next is plasticity. Plasticity describes the deformation of a material undergoing non-reversible changes of shape in response to external forces. So, plastic materials is meron pa rin uh, deformation na bumabalik pero hindi totally bumabalik sa original shape niya. Merong deformation na non-reversible. So, hindi na bumabalik yung sum of the deformation. So, not all. Unlike dun sa, tawag oh, dito, yung nauna dito sa elasticity uh, deformation is 
bumabalik. So, sana po sa elasticity. Next is brittleness. Brittleness describes the property of a material that fractures when subjected to stress but has a little tendency to deform before rupture. So, brittle yung material mo kapag uh, nasubject siya sa stress is tawag dito, magpra-fracture or uh, mawawasak na lang siya. Yung deformation niya is hindi gaanong malaki bago yung uh, rupture niya. So, yan. Brittle yung material. Kung ganun. Next is toughness. Uh, it is the wait lang, basahin natin. Impacted or vibrated by stress, a material is able to absorb much energy and deform greatly without rupture, which is known as toughness, also called impact toughness. Kapag yung material mo is able to resist vibration or impacts, it is uh, it has a high toughness. So, yan. Ability to resist vibration or impact. Next is hardness. Hardness refers to the property of a material to resist pressing in or scratch of a sharp object. So, mahirap ma-scratch. So, kapag nilagyan mo na yung application ng force mo is sobrang liit yung area, hindi siya madaling uh, ma-scratch. So, hardness. Next, we have here abrasive resistance. Abrasive resistance refers to the capacity of a material to resist abrasion. Or yung material mo should be able to res uh, resist the wear and tear when the material is subjected to friction. So, yun yung abrasive resistance. So, that would be all. Uh, thank you for listening.